to start with this notebook on basics of collab environment. You can also open, click this button and it's gonna open the notebook. So you can go and find the link to this notebook called Hello Collab. And we're gonna start with an introduction to Google Collab. We're gonna use Google Collab as the environment to write your Python code, do the visualization and do most of the work during the course. So let's spend some time learning about what Google Collab is and some of the you know, features that it offers for us to use that as our Python environment. If you have used Google Collab, great. If you never use Google Collab, this will give you an introduction and say, I'm familiar with writing Python code in another editor or maybe VS Code or Spider, or maybe in my own editor, how to use Collab to use a notebook. Collab is a service that is given, that's hosted by Google. It provides you with a cloud-based environment to run your Python code. If you've written Python code in a Jupyter notebook, this is your Jupyter notebook in the cloud. When you open, go to Google Collab, all it requires is a Google account. So if you have a Gmail account or a Google account, you should be able to use Collab. You have to go to collab.research.google.com and you can start this notebook. This notebook is coming from my repository. You can see it's coming from a GitHub repository. You have read access to it, you don't have write access to it. That means if you change stuff to this, you won't be able to see it. So the first thing you want to do is make a copy of this into your own Google Drive. So whenever we open a new notebook, the first step you want to do is go to file and say, save a copy in drive. When you do this, it's going to take the notebook that we opened from my GitHub repository and it will save it into your Google Drive. Google Collab is part of Google Drive offering. So it's going to just put a file named hello collab.ipymb in your drive. Once you do this, it's going to open a new tab and your URL should look like collab.reaches.google.com slash drive with a long ID. And now once you have it, whatever changes you make will be auto-saved into your drive. So you can come back to it. And so make sure you are working on this and not on the notebook from my repository. When you start a new Collab notebook, the first thing you want to do is click this button called connect. When you click connect, Google will assign a new machine that is running in Google Cloud. It will initialize a new Python environment you can think of it as like a brand new Linux machine that has just been initialized for you. And then it has got a bunch of Python libraries installed, knows how to interpret Jupyter Notebook, and you can now start in the machine to run your code. It's connected. If I hover over it, it says I'm connected to a compute engine backend. I have a machine that has got 12 GB of RAM and 107 GB of storage. Pretty nice machine. Also allows you to connect you to a GPU. So if you're doing deep learning, and if you want a nice GPU, Colab also allows you to connect to that one free of cost. There's a Colab Pro version where you can get a better machines, but this free machine should be good enough for most of your workflows. Once you're connected to the machine, now you have a new machine. Every time you go and open a new tab, you're going to get a new machine. So remember, everything you create on this machine is only temporary. Once you close this tab, that machine is going to go away. So either you download stuff to your own drive or own computer before you move away from this. Let's see how it works. This is a Jupyter notebook. There are cells, you have text, which has some links and some text. We have some code cells. Here you can click this A button and it's gonna run this code using the Python environment that Google Collab provides. This is similar to running a notebook on a local environment, but now you have a Python environment that is available to you. As you are working on the notebooks, one useful shortcut to learn is shift enter which just allows you to just run the cell without your reaching out for the play button using your mouse. And this goes move to the next one. So if I want to run the next cell, I can just keep using shift enter. It's going to keep moving through each cell and running that. Collab is designed for data science. That means if you have most data science libraries like pandas and geopandas are pre-installed. All the visualization libraries that people commonly use are also pre-installed. So you don't have to install anything. You can just import the libraries that you want and you can use this. They keep adding new packages to it. Also, you know, maybe if some packages are not installed yet, in the future, they may be available. If you find that a package you want is not available, so for example, we want to use X-Ray. Along with X-Ray, there's an extension for Rio X-Ray. I want to use Rio X-Ray. And I want to use this, and you can see it's not installed. So in the machine that Colab provided, it's not available to us. You can install it. To install Python packages, Colab supports pip, so if your package is on pip, Python package index, you should be able to install this. How do we install this? You can run a command like this, pip install to your 
So this cell says, you want to install this package GUI X-ray, prefixing any code with this exclamation mark says, run this on the machine that this Jupyter Notebook is running. You can't install this in a notebook. You have to install it on the machine that this notebook is running on. So the exclamation provides you to access that machine and say, run this command on that machine. Let's run this. This will go and install this package. And once it's done, you'll be able to use this. And remember, you have to do this every time. You come back and run this notebook tomorrow on Colab, you have to run this cell again because you would have got a new machine which doesn't have this package. But typically it takes only a few seconds. So you should be a lot of this installation stuff is quite verbose. I don't like my notebook cluttered with this. So you'll see most of my notebooks has this cell magic at the top called capture. This says whatever output comes, don't print it. Just makes your notebook clean. So if, if you want to use this, you can use this. I typically like to do this for my steps, which I know are working. It also will hide any errors. So don't do this if you are doing something new. Once it's installed, now I can import it and you should be able to successfully use that. You should keep running the cells as I'm talking. So feel free to just you know use shift enter and run this and make sure you are able to see the output of those. Now we are in a cloud environment. We may need to download some data and save some data and do this. So we can use the Python OS model to interact with the operating system that this particular machine is running on. Here we are using the OS module to say os.mkdir data folder. And it's going to create a folder called data in the machine that we are using and also another folder called output. Where is the folder? Well, I want to browse to this. On the left hand panel, there is this file icon. If I can click on this, it's going to show you the view of the directory structure of the machine that we are running on. So you can see now we have created this data folder and an output folder. All the notebooks follow the same structure. All the data we download will go into data folder. All the output we create will go into output. Just makes your data organized and you will be able to browse through the data here. You'll also be able to you know, create folders and do stuff from here. If you have data in Google Drive, you can mount your Google Drive and read it from here or write it there. So that's another way. So I have upload a lot of data in Google Drive. I want to use them with Python. You can also mount Drive and use this. For most of the course, what we want to make this notebook compatible with the local environment. So even if you take this, download this and run this on your own machine, this will say, I want to get the data. So it's just going to download the data to, from the internet into the data folder that we have just created. And we follow the structure so that if you download this notebook locally and run this, you will get the same data and output folder and all the stuff we download will go to a data folder locally. So it just kind of makes it easy to run this locally as well. So in case some people say, I don't like Colab, I want to run it locally. You can just keep doing that as well. You have this helper function, which just allows you to download data from a URL. Let's use this function. All of the notebooks contain this function. So I will say, give a URL, we just download that to our data folder. We're going to uh, download this data from Natural Earth. Natural Earth is a website that provides you really nice open source data for mapping. You're going to download some data for populated places. This is the URL of that data. I'm going to say download this. And it's going to just fetch the data from the internet, save it on the local folder on my collab machine. If I go to my data, you can see now it has got this zip file. This is a shape file, which is zipped into one file, which came to me. If you run this on your own machine, you're going to get the data from the internet to your local machine. Since Colab runs in the cloud, it's called a really fast pipe to the internet. And I've seen that you can download like 10 gigabyte of files in a few seconds. So this makes working with large data also quite nice that you don't have to download everything locally, it just goes from cloud to cloud and work, makes working with large data sets quite easy. And once we download the data, we can say it's now in our file system. We can treat it like a local file and we can just read it using any libraries that we want. So we are, we are using GeoPandas to say, read this file and create a geodata frame. Let's just see the, what the data looks like. So this is our geodata frame, which is red. This is the data of all the populated places of the world. It's got about 7,000 rows, 32 columns, different countries and different cities of that. We can apply some filter and do some processing. So we're gonna select all the places where, which are capitals of the world. So we just want to have a data layer of all the capitals. We have this field here. ADM zero cap. If it's one, that means that particular city is a capital of the country. So we're just going to apply a filter. This is a pandas syntax for applying a filter. 
So you select all the places where ADM zero cap value is one and create a new data frame called capitals. So now we're going to run this and we say now we have about 200 rows which match this filter and we have a new data frame. Let's say we did some analysis. This is the result of our analysis. And I want to get this data locally. I don't want it to go away once I you know, close my tab. So I can go and say, I want to write it down as a file. So I have this geodata frame. I can save it in any format. So this is geopandas. So we can use this function to file and say, I want to create a file called capitals.geopackage into my output folder. And when you run this code, this data frame is going to turn into a geo package which is now in my output folder. So now I've created a new geo package file, which contains only the capitals. So I connected to a cloud environment, installed some stuff, got some data from the internet, did my analysis, saved my result here. If I want to now see this data, I can visualize this, but I want to download it to my own machine. I can come here. There's a three dot hamburger menu, click here and say download. This is now going to download this data from the Collab machine to my own machine here. And now if I see my folder here, you can see I have this new file capitals.g package, which was created using Collab and now it's on my system and I can do whatever you want with it. So I can just go to my QGS and say, I want, I've just created some data from Collab, downloaded it and I want to see it. And you can see this is the data that we got. So this is the, the way if you want to download the data from your collab machine, you just come here and download it. So you'll have a local copy with you. All the notebooks are set up so that if you have your code here, you open a new tab with collab and you just run all the cells, you can create the output again. And that's the beauty of using Python for all your analysis that you can reproduce your output with code. You don't need to really document it. Your code is your documentation. One helpful way when you have a notebook during the course and you say, I want to run everything. I don't want to just hold shift enter and keep running it. You can come here to say runtime and run all. It's going to go from the top to bottom and run all the cells. So when you just say, I have a notebook, I just want to run everything and get my output. Just do this and you get your output at the last cell. So this is another helpful menu to just run everything at once. Many times when you are working on the course, you'll have a notebook where I'm teaching stuff. At the end, there's an exercise. Before running the exercise, you do run everything. So this is the way you would do this. You say, run all and you'll be able to run all the cells when you're done you want to this file this is now a file in your google drive just like any other ipymp file if you want to download the whole notebook to your machine and use a local editor you can say file download ipymp and you'll get a local jupyter notebook that you can open with vs code or jupyter lab or any other editor that you want so if you at some point you find i built this but i want to run it locally you can just download the notebook as an IPYNB file and run that. Finally, one other thing that this helps is if you want to share your code with somebody else, you can build a notebook in Collab and share very easily. There's a share button here. By default, like Google Drive, everything is private. So whatever you created is private to you, but you can choose to share with other colleagues or just make it public. 